Hello everyone and welcome back to our playthrough series of Distant Worlds 2. We are playing as the Hakanish Guilds. Last time out we basically got our game set up and then we came in and we booted around some screens, we looked at some numbers and then we took some stuff into manual control and we're going to play out that way. So join us now as we continue on with the great unpausing. Okay, so first off, um, let's change our view. So we have a few view options here. Right now we are uh, actually on the uh, the the low angle view, but if we go to back to default, that's your default view there. And then we have the top down. If you like in Distant Worlds Universe and you like the top down look, you can play the entire game top down if you want. Or if you want a low angle, or a high angle, it's a high angle, so it's kind of like top down, just a slight angle to it. Or a low angle, which is uh, what I usually look at when I'm looking at battles and stuff, so we can just zoom right in. Uh, there's our spaceport under construction. So yeah, um, I generally go with this view, the default view for now. And uh, yeah, you can drag around and off we go. So, what do we do now? We hit the old space bar and we see what happens. So, let's do that. Uh, we can dismiss these messages too. Uh, we already know that there's unknown items at, uh, at our homeworld, which has been renamed at this point. So, we'll get rid of that message. And we have a new leader who's also been renamed at this point. So, we'll get rid of that message too. And we'll hit the old space bar and get this thing going. Okay, the first thing that's going to happen is uh, Starship Constructed. We have constructed our first starship, the Fortunate Gambit. This event marks the beginning of a return to the stars. We must continue to expand and explore our solar system, build more ships to establish a thriving solar empire. Absolutely. So let's go to that location. And there he is there. Very cool. So a couple options. I'm just going to hit space. Uh, you'll see me hitting space anytime I go to talk because I don't want stuff happening while I'm talking. Um, so we could do a couple things here. We can send them over to explore these two uh, items here, which I think I'll probably do. But because we have unknown items at our homeworld, we could get them to rescan our homeworld or do a scan on our homeworld, actually. Uh, scanned anything yet, so there's no rescanning involved. But uh, yeah, we can uh, scan our homeworld and dig this out. Now, something to note also is we don't actually have to do that. The population living here will eventually explore the planet and will raise that po uh, that uh, exploration level on their own. Um, throwing a miner on a on a on a planet will also do the same thing. If there's unknown items here, you throw a miner on it. It will eventually, as you as your workers mine, they will eventually discover stuff as well. So just having a presence on a on a body will actually uh, dig out any unknown items. So we could probably skip that and we'll uh, just do a right click and we'll uh, get him to come over to this gas giant. This is probably our fuel, so very important that we get over here and see what this is. So just a quick right click and off he goes. And it's going to take him a minute to get there. Go back to our low angle. Uh, once this ship is selected, we can do something cool. We can actually go to bridge camera view. Boom. Doesn't look like much is happening, but we are getting closer and closer. So this is actually inside the ship. And if it was a fighter or something uh, exciting, then you'd see the scene flipping around and everything. But uh, not a whole lot to see right now. So we'll just go back to default view. So uh, if you've noticed or I've heard there are no orbits in this game like there was in the original. Uh, bodies do not orbit the sun. Moons do not orbit the planets. That is uh, a little disappointing to some, but as you play, you will find that it's not going to really make a whole lot of difference. Uh, the spinning planets is new from Distant Worlds Universe, so that actually helps uh, bring the universe alive. And that's uh, that's kind of the replacement. Spinning planets for orbits, I guess, is uh, the sacrifice we made. And I, I can see it. Uh, that would be a whole lot of logistical coding to actually uh, implement that on such a um, a vast engine so we might see it at some point who knows so like I said don't try to 4x as much as it's, as you're going to be tempted to do this but like I said try to try to stick to the to the uh, to the default speeds and just get a sense of how big everything is how big the playing field is yeah it's going to get boring 
But you know what? You're new to the game. So while you're kind of waiting for that to happen, maybe have a look at the, I don't know, the uh, income screen. Try to decipher this while you're sitting here waiting. Oh, we're 136 in the hole. Why is that? Oh, oh well, we got a troop. Okay, that's costing some money. Ship and base maintenance. Oh, that's a little pricey, isn't it? Again, the AI is uh, actually uh, taking care of all this. But the, uh, the economy is split into two sections. We have the state economy and we also have the private economy. Private economy is, is uh, responsible for shunting resources around. They have their own ship sets, uh, their freighters, their mining station or mining uh, uh, ships and everything. They also maintain all our mining stations. So once you build a mining station, that is not our expense up here. That is actually their expense. And it looks like we've discovered something. I'm just going to pause the game for, for a second. We have discovered uh, something at Zuma, Zuma Prime. So this is the unknown resource. Let's just select the planet and have a look here. That was that unknown resource that we were uh, puzzling on earlier. So uh, we have uh, discovered a new resource. Uh, Iocelin Jade is a beautiful translucent green stone. It is mined in great slabs in riverbed rocks. Iocelin Jade is found exclusively on marshy swamp worlds. Uh, it provides the following bonus of 6% colony development. So I briefly touched on development here. So if we come into our, let's go away. We come into our uh, stockpiles and we scroll down, we see we have Iocelin Jade, which just showed up. So we actually don't have any yet. So we just found it. We're going to start mining here shortly. And, but with Mangelis Nut, we already knew. So we've been mining that for a minute and we got 1,650 uh, units of it. And these indicators here show that that resource is actually mined here. If we scroll back up, we can see that one's actually mined here. Uh, planets do have a cap on how much capacity they can have. Um, it's driven by uh, the planet size and population and everything. So this, these numbers will increase as we go up, but that's just indicating you're at capacity. So you can't actually bring any more of this to homeworld. So if you have a mining station sitting out there with this stuff on it, then you'll have to, uh, it'll probably just stockpile there until we need it at homeworld, and then they'll send a freighter to go get some and bring it back. And then they'll maintain those stock levels. So that's kind of how the private sector deals with the, uh, the resources. Now, like I said, these are real world resources. So one piece of steel, come into here. This is our resources tab here. So one piece of steel right now is worth 1.5 credits. So you can extrapolate that 6,870 units of steel multiplied by 1.5, you can get a monetary value of what your inventory is right now. These numbers fluctuate. Uh, there's inflation, you know, there's all that, all that kind of stuff. It might go up, might come down. Uh, if it goes up, it affects everything right up to shipbuilding. Uh, if this goes up to say uh, to $3 a credit, that doubles your maintenance on all your ships that have steel. Okay, all those pieces of steel on your ship will go up in value, which mean your maintenance will be more. It'll cost more to build the ships, blah, blah, blah. So the idea is to make sure you have a good supply of steel to keep the, that inflationary rate down. And the AI is pretty good on keeping on top of that stuff. So again, you don't really have to monkey with this at all. You can if you want. Um, there has been cases where I went, oh yeah, I think I want to take control of that. So you can go into your automation, shut the automation off on this, and then monkey around with this however you please. And then uh, later on, if you go, okay, well, I'm kind of done with that situation, you put the automation back on and the AI will pick up and take over again. So you can interrupt AI however you want. Okay, so anyways, we found some Iosalyn Jade. Uh, 8% mining rate. We have 48% mining rate on the Magellus nut and 91 on the carbonite. So what does the mining rate mean? Well, 91% is the flow rate, basically. It all comes down to flow. Uh, I, I'm just going to put the flow on, but there's nothing flowing, so there's nothing to really see. But it comes down to flow rate. So if you have 91, let's, for instance, say this is 100%, just uh, for easy math, say the carbonite is 100%, okay? So we have 100% extraction of carbonite on our home world. If we come into the technology tree and come down to mining, yeah, wherever that is, mining, 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 where is our mining? Yep, oh, let's do it here. We'll come to mining, 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 mining. Okay, so here's a basic mining engine. Yeah, you can you can uh, jump to different sections of the tech tree and uh, just focus in on what you need to. So this mining engine here, uh, we're just gonna look at the small mining engine just for easy math. 
you can see the mining rate is 10 per second. So if that resource is 100%, means the flow rate is at 100%, meaning we're going to get full flow rate at, a, at 10 per second. Yeah, so with carbonite at 991%, that means we're going to get 9.1 units of carbonite every second with that mining engine. And as the technology improves, uh, the rate at the extraction with the mining engines will actually improve. And actually, we kind of saw that. Here's the next uh, level of mining engine here. Okay, mining rate is now 12 per second. So you get 91% of 12 per second, that sort of thing. So that's how the flow rates work. All right, so anyways, we're going to carry on and uh, see what happens next. That's what the game is all about, what happens next. So it looks like we're going to be 1.26 years to get our uh, early warp field experiments. So that's going to click along. If we look at our research tab and we hover over this, we can see we have a maximum re potential research of 11. And that's coming from our popu uh, colony population. There's no other bonuses anywhere or anywhere else to build any kind of uh, research station. So that's it. That's all we get until we discover some stuff. So if we look here, we can see that we're now at four. Exploration level four. And we didn't do anything. That's just the population uh, actually increasing that. And that's what exposed our Iosalan Jade. Okay, we're going to pause here. Uh, if you didn't notice, I had did a quick time lapse there. I will be editing and time lapsing some dead spots out. So um, if you see things speed up suddenly, that's what I'm doing. But we have another exploration ship done. So let's uh, zip over to have a quick look at this one. There he is there. And if you click on the actual design name, you can come into the editor and have a quick look. Uh, the, they can't adjust anything when you come in this way, but uh, that's kind of what our ship looks like. And it's got a few things on it. Uh, it's got a survey module, which allows it to do its scans. A sur uh, proximity sensor, a couple of weapons, some engines, and a bunch of various other things. Fuel, uh, reactors, what have you. Uh, no warp drives whatsoever. So that's kind of what our uh, ship looks like. Some stats here, which are just a lot of numbers. If you love numbers, this is your game. And there's everything we need to build this ship. We are just talking about resources. Well, there it is. We need 106 steel, so at 1.5 credits per unit, you can extrapolate, or whatever the price is on all this, you can extrapolate all that pricing, and it will probably come to this price right here, 2,638 credits. So if you calculate all that out, there's also hull, um, hull size and everything to to consider as well when you're when you're calculating all that, so... And there's crew capacity and all that stuff. Um, we'll get into this more as we um, progress. But that's a quick look at the design screen. Anyways, what are we going to get this guy to do? Well, I think we'll get him to rescan our homeworld for now. Uh, my idea is get him to do the gas giant and then whip over and grab this. So we have the second one here that doesn't really have much else to do. So I could leave this, like I said, and not worry about it. But I think we'll use our second explorer to survey our homeworld. And that will actually uh, bring that survey level up to uh, a, a, a more decent level quicker. And just right click to get rid of the messages. And we'll carry on. All right, we're going to pause here because we found some hidden items. So let's see what our exploration level is. So completely explored at level 10. So the exploration ship uh, brought us up to level 10. Uh, he can't go any further than that because of the um, module he has. I believe it's, uh, that's not him. Come into the design and have a look at the survey module. Survey amount 10. Maximum survey level is 15. Is he going again? No. So I think that's all we can do there. Uh, there's not much else we can do with him at the moment, so I guess we'll just get him to sit tight. And we'll continue on. And we have a new spy. So, show me the spy. There he is. 
no skills exposed yet. Uh, we can't really do much with him because we don't know anybody. So, the only thing we can do with him is put him on counterintelligence. And maybe put him on manual. Again, you can leave it on all this on automatic if you want. You don't have to engage in this if you're not wanting to. And our exploration ship is uh, pretty much there. We've got a little ways to go, so he's still approaching the gas giant. All right. So our explorer made it to the gas giant. There he is there. It's taking him two minutes to scan this out. So he's just going to sit here, send his probes down, and uh, eventually we'll figure out what's on this planet. There's an unknown bonus and unknown resources. So we'll find out in a bit just what that's about. And then we'll be able to um, see what else is going on once we get our warp drives. Uh, we have a new construction ship too. Show me that. There he is. Waiting for something to do. So what can we get you to do? Um, Nothing really I can do at Homeworld. Um, I am interested in what this location bonus is. That could be a, a research bonus. If it is, I'd rather build that first than the fuel. And he still has 67 seconds left, so we're going to wait and see what this is. We'll figure out what this uh, gas giant is going to provide. It's probably going to be fuel, but not guaranteed. Is there another gas giant in this system? Yeah, there's a couple. So it's not guaranteed this will be fuel. It would be super handy if it was, but there's no guarantee. So we'll wait and see what's on it first. Yeah, sort of get a perspective from this way. That's a big gas giant. And all the planets and moons and everything are procedurally generated, so you'll never see two that are the, exactly the same. Spaceport is being constructed now. Yeah, all the plating's going on the superstructure. And there we go. We're finished. So, what did the fortunate Gambit find? You found Keslon or Fuel. Perfect. You also found Krypton. Typically used in weapons. Perfect. Also found some Argon. Typically used in weapons, shielding, and reactor components. And then we also found a 14% industrial research bonus. That's what I was looking for. So let's dismiss that. We're going to grab our uh, exploration ship and we're going to right click and get him to go over and see what this other moon is. The moon of Tihi. So yes, uh, location bonus, industrial research, 14%. But anyways, uh, so that uh, means we can build a research locate uh, station on this. So I'm going to grab our construction ship here. And we'll control right click, build research station one at Riddle 6. So we'll do that first. So he's going to go. If you're wondering why they don't just run right over to the plant and start building, because he has to come over here and pick up those resources that we saw in that list in the design screen. Everything that gets built needs all those resources. So he has to come over to Homeworld. And we'll see his cargo come up in a sec here. So he's picking up everything he needs to build that uh, research station. And there it is. And off he goes. So he's going to head on over and do that. It's going to take a minute to get there, though. Chances are we'll have skip drives before we have that. However, uh, there might be enough distance. Uh, skip drives have a minimum jump range. So if something's super close, like if he came over here and tried to go here, chances are he'd just impulse over to that because the distance isn't enough. He'd probably be able to skip drive this way. So if I really wanted, I could wait. 
and retrofit him. He's going to be a while getting over there. And we're probably going to have the skip drives here right shortly. So instead of going over there now, I'm going to change my mind. I think. I'm going to move over here. By the time he gets there, this spaceport should be done. Come in here, have a look. Small spaceport is 70% done. So we'll bring that construction ship over there. It's going to circle around the planet and come over here. And by the time he gets there, we should be able to get the skip drives on, and he should be able to skip that distance, I think. I might be wrong. But I think that's enough distance to skip over. That wouldn't be enough, but I think that is. So we'll try it this way. 96% there. And a new scientist has appeared. Well, that'll be perfect for that science station once we get it built. But for now, he's probably just going to sit at Homeworld. Uh, he's not going to be contributing anything while he's sitting there. So we got to get that science station built. And characters generally don't reveal their stats until they've been working for a bit. So we don't know anything about them yet. So I'll have to get that uh, station built. Yeah, I might as well wait for skip drives to get over there. And there it is. Hyperdrive technology discovered. Using the ancient uh, knowledge recovered in our earlier exploration, we have developed our very first primitive hyperdrive. This breakthrough technology allows us to travel to travel faster than light. This momentous discovery means that we can quickly transverse our own solar system, exploring and expanding. Further advances should let us e travel even further to faraway stars, truly exploring the galaxy. Should quickly exploit this new capability by redesigning and building new ships with these hyperdrives. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to hit pause. Uh, recent events have produced another scientist. We have two scientists now. Perfect. And there's a technology we just discovered. So at this point, if you have all your ship designs and everything automated, you really don't have to do anything. Um, everything will probably go retrofit and uh, you'll be able to carry on. Uh, if you're manually controlling ships, then you'll have to actually get them to go retrofit. But because we are also manually controlling our designs, uh, we have to come in and actually design these. So, like I said, if you had the, all this on automatic and your master switch on the, uh, the the options on automatic, you probably won't have to do any of this. So, if you're, for your first game, you don't want to monkey with this at all, you can probably just skip this whole section and then just carry on afterwards. But just for a bit of fun and exercise, I'm going to come in and uh, adjust our construction ship. So we can hit the upgrade button. And welcome to the design screen. So the first thing we're going to need is a name. Uh, this is what uh, the, the, the default upgrade will do is just go V2. So it's just taking whatever name was there and saying V2. But I'm going to call this a skip. Fabricator. The Great Fabricator. And right under it, we have a couple of recommendations and a defect. And it's telling us we must have a hyperdrive. So once you get the technology, you cannot build pre-warp ships. You have to have an actual hyperdrive on it. So there's just no building without this now. It just won't let you save. And so we put a skip drive on. You basically come up, you click on one of these, and you throw it in an empty uh, 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 bay here. And they're all co color-coded, so uh, weapons are a different color from uh, your general uh, components. Uh, your construction stuff is a different color from, say, uh, your defensive components as well. Weapons, uh, engines are a different color. So everything's color-coded. Fairly easy to see. Uh, I generally sort, you can sort however you find stuff easiest. I find the uh, all components category is my easiest way to do. And you can uh, uh, drill down to, okay, show me just weapons. Okay, show me just reactors. Uh, show me just defenses. We don't have any, which is <laughs> not comforting whatsoever. So anyways, uh, yeah, so we put our skip drive on. Uh, now, notice we have gone oversized. We're too big for this actual hull. So, uh, we're also short on hyperdrive space, or hyperdrive speed, or power, sorry, which is affecting our hyperdrive uh, 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 speed. Uh, our full speed is, if you look down to the stats near the bottom there, hyperdrive speed 10k. Well, we're not going 10k yet. 
uh, we're actually short on power. So we have to get another reactor on this thing. So we can find another empty spot or we can replace another component. We could probably take a fuel off in order to do that. So maybe we'll just, uh, we can right click, take that off and then left click to put that on. That fixes our power issue. Doesn't fix our size issue though. We are quite a bit oversized. Now, because this is a construction ship, not really meant for combat, I'm probably just going to rip the weapons off it. Uh, these weapons in the early game against pirates and that don't do anything, so there's no real point of having them. Just make sure that your stances up here are set to evade. And retreat when attacked. Uh, you can set your retreat. When do you want to retreat? Never. Do you want to just keep building till the thing gets destroyed? Or do you want to wait till 50% of non-component... Uh, or non-defense uh, components are damaged. Want to wait till uh, when attacked. You want to wait till the enemy's nearby. As soon as you spot them, you know, leave. Sort of thing. Um, we're just going to go when attacked is fine. That's the default. So if someone attacks it, he's going to take it to uh, turn and run. So that's kind of what we want to do. Uh, we're within size. Uh, we could put something else on. We got 11 space. But uh, we're going to have armor coming up pretty soon. I want to put a piece of armor on this at a later point. So... We're going full speed, that's kind of all we need. Some more stats down here. Um, cargo capacity, stuff like that. How much cargo can you bring to do your build? And there's all the stuff we need to build this. So, uh, everything looks good. It's two recommendations saying we don't have some supplies of materials. That's true because we're just getting started. And we've reached the maximum of two sh two engines per for this hull. So engine limit is two and we got two. So we can't put any more engines on this. Uh, there's three spots for a reason. Uh, when you put your engines on, uh, the system will auto-balance. So if we went to one engine, it would put it in the middle. So we put the other engine back on, it balances them out. Just so it doesn't throw all the engine on one side of the, of the ship. That's basically what that does. So if you see things flipping around a bit when you're doing this, don't worry about it. It's just kind of balancing uh, the load. All right. Save it. Our first uh, design, the skip fabricator is done. Um, I, I'm going to retrofit manually, so I'll just click that back to manual. Our escort, now this is a military ship, so we're going to hit upgrade on that, and we'll just maybe call this a skip guardian. Okay, capital if you don't mind. So, skip guardian, and once again, we need a skip drive, and we'll just plop that in the empty bay there. Typically, I don't really build these right out the gate. Uh, I wait till I get like the next warp drive. I might build them early before then, but uh, for the most part, I generally don't even bother building these in the early game. So it's an added expense. We got to really watch our expenses. So military is actually something we're not going to engage in heavily right away. So we'll just save that. And we won't spend too much time on it. And we'll click that back to manual. And then we'll grab our exploration ship. That's the only three ships we really need to adjust right now. And this will be the skip and a, 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 a surveyor, I guess. Sounds good to me since it's got a survey module on it. Again, I'm going to pull the weapons. Again, this is not a military ship and we don't really need them on there. We will throw a skip drive on it. Uh, there's no free spot, so we'll have to right click, get rid of a fuel cell and put a skip drive on it. Going to be a little shy on speed, 9K instead of 10. I'm probably okay with that. We could adjust it. Pull another fuel cell for another reactor. We might as well. We, this doesn't have to go far. Uh, as far as sorting all this, like trying to keep all your reactors together and everything, I, I, I just don't. <laughs> it's not worth the time. Uh, just find a spot, put it in. Um, yeah, If you want to get really nerdy about that, it doesn't affect anything, so I probably wouldn't worry about it. You can actually uh, sort by name too. Uh, sort of di two different ways. I usually go by bay type. So yeah, that gives us the full speed and we can survey uh, the whole solar system. Again, a couple recommendations, same as last time, uh, engine limit and some resources missing. So we'll save that one. And yep, yeah, that's our three ships. Uh, again, the merchant freighter and the mining ship we have an automatic, and these should already be done. So if I just come in and do a quick edit, um, yep, skip drives are already on on, on the on the design. So the AI is already ahead of me on that. So you could you could 
like I said, keep all these on automatic and never worry about a ship design if that's what you want to do. If you don't want to even worry about this, you don't have to. All right, so now that we've done that, we can now retrofit our ships. So we have the scout here. I'm just going to send him for retrofit by clicking this button. It's going to cost 170 credits. Off you go. And this construction ship here, I'm going to do the same thing. We're just we're just on a move to order right now, but now that we have another design, we can actually hit that retrofit button. And when he retrofits, he's going to drop all this stuff back off at Homeworld, and we'll have to pick it all up again to go build that uh, station, but that's fine. Okay, and I think I would like a couple extras. So I'm not going to build them yet. I want to get this one Explorer retrofitted first before I put a new build into the queue. So let him come in first. And our spaceport is now constructed. We have constructed a spaceport. A large orbital base serves as a shipyard, allowing us to build many different types of starships. Our new spaceport also provides a hub for trade and commerce. Freighters will deliver cargo here and ships can refuel here. As our technology progresses, we should upgrade our spaceport with other capabilities, shield weapons for defense, research lab sensors, and more. So let's have a quick look at that. Very nice. I dismiss you. Yep, there's our bay right there. So ships will come and go out of that bay. One on the other side as well. I think there's two bays on this design. Oh, there's just one. Okay, it must be a throughput then. So they come in one side, go out the other. So there's a, there's a second slot there for one. Uh, the advisor is advising that we build three more exploration ships. Well, not yet. I'm going to decline that. And with that, we bring this episode to a close. We managed to perform the great unpausing. We did a bit of uh, exploration around our home world. And we got uh, new technology to allow us to reach out into our solar system to find out what mysteries lie out there. Join us next time as we continue to explore our solar system. Thanks for watching.